The NBA draft lottery is basically a week away with the NBA draft following a couple months later. However, what questions could possibly be answered by the results of the draft lottery? We'll talk about that in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Lockdown Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, or if you're one of the 50% of people who are watching this on YouTube and haven't hit that subscribe button already, head over to the YouTube channel, Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to support the podcast. We're on our road to 3,000 subscribers. Continuing to show Lockdown, we are the best and fastest growing fan base at the Lockdown Network. So again, hit that subscribe button over at Lockdown Pistons YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it. It's the best way to support the podcast. Now, we're going to be answering three questions that the results of the draft lottery could possibly answer for the Detroit Pistons offseason. So first thing we're going to get out the way is, one, obviously the questions won't be for sure answered until they actually select who they select in the draft. But I think when you get the results of the draft or the lottery, you'll have an idea. We'll, we'll start having a better idea of who's going to be there, who the Pistons will likely select, et cetera, et cetera. That's one. Two, we're going to go ahead and do a sim, a sim lottery over at Tankathon just for fun. The Pistons remain in three in this uh, in this little Tankathon one I just did. That's actually like the best one we've gotten all year. We haven't gotten a good one at all, all season. So this is definitely the best one. So anyways, three questions that the draft lottery could possibly answer for the Detroit Pistons. First question that it will possibly answer for the Pistons and I think we've talked about this a lot in the podcast. I think everyone is in the same agreement here. The draft lottery will reveal who they'll likely go after in free agency. Now, if you go and look at take a you go over to the mock draft. Right now, they have Chet Holmgren as number one, Jabari Smith at number two, and Paolo Bencaro at number three. The Pistons currently have the third likeliest odd. So in this mock draft, the Pistons are being select are having being predicted to select Paolo Bencaro. So who, wherever the Pistons land in this draft lottery, we'll start to get a better idea of who they get or who they'll be wanting and who will be available. And that will let you know who they go after in free agency. For example, if they get like a, the number one pick, it's very likely that they're probably going to get a big man, whether that's Jabari Smith, maybe Chet Holmgren. I think probably Chet or Paolo would be the, the pick if they got number one. But if they landed anywhere in the top three, I think the answer, I think a lot of us would agree, would be either Jabari Smith, Chet Holmgren, or Paolo Bencaro. So, and I have a lot more of the, I have more prospects that I want to start scouting. We went through Holmgren, Paolo. I think that's it so far. Oh, and we got Sharp coming up and we'll eventually get to Jabari Smith as well. And we'll get to a bunch of other ones. So I don't know who I have at the top of my list outside the top two guys I've, I've scouted so far. But I think everyone understands that if they land in the top three, they'll be getting a big man. So if they end up getting a big man in the draft and they land in the top three in the draft lottery, they're probably not going to go after DeAndre Ayton, who, they have been linked to for the past year or so. Now, on this podcast, I've said that I think it's unlikely that they get DeAndre Ayton because I highly doubt Phoenix lets him walk. I just don't see it happening. That doesn't change the fact, though, that the, the Detroit Pistons have been linked to him all year. They probably have a lot of interest in him if the rumors and the reports are correct. And if they get a top three pick, I think that rules out the possibility of going after DeAndre Ayton. If they fall out of the top three, you're looking at where Tankathon has Jay and Ivy, four, Sharp, five, Keegan Murray, six, you got A.J. Griffin, seven, uh, Matherin, Benedict Matherin, number eight. You start looking at more guards. You start looking at more wings. And if they get a wing or a guard and they fall in, in the draft ladder where you assume that Ben Carroll, Smith, and Holmgren will not be available, they'll likely be going after one of the big men. They will not probably be going after Jalen Brunson, Miles Bridges, Colin Sexton, etc. I think those are the type of answers that you could possibly get just from the draft lottery. Now, again, we we don't know who the what, what Troy Weaver's big board looks like. I think everyone though can have a basic understanding. I think everyone's in agreement. If you don't agree with this, let me know in the comment section down below, or you can tweet at me over at Kuka Hill on Twitter. If the Pistons get a top three pick, they're getting a big man. I, I think a lot of people are in agreement about that. And if they fall out the top three, now it's getting a little bit more you know interesting. Are they going to go wing? Are they going to go guard? Could they possibly you know uh, maybe get? I think the next guy that at least Tankathon has listed as a 
quote unquote big guy is Keegan Murray, but he's six eight, power four. I'm assuming he's more of a wing. So if they out if they land outside the top three, I doubt they get a big guy. So those are the answers that could be an, the questions that could be answered simply from the draft ladder. Who will the Detroit Pistons be going after in free agency? If they get top three, likely DeAndre Ainge crossed off the list. You probably still hear rumors about Colin Sexton, Jalen Brunson, Miles Bridges, guys like that in free agency. If they fall out of top three, you likely will stop hearing about some of the Jalen Brunson stuff, some of the Colin Sexton stuff, Miles Bridges stuff. Actually, maybe not Miles Bridges. Miles Bridges may stay on the board if they get a guard, if they really want a wing. I wouldn't rule Miles Bridges out, but I think it definitely would rule out Jalen Brunson and Colin Sexton, and DeAndre Ayn would still remain at the top of their free agent board if the reports are correct. So let me know in the comment section down below if you guys agree with that, what you guys think about that. You can also let me know over on Twitter, at Kukli Hill, but I think that's the first thing that will be revealed from the results of the draft lottery. When we come back, we'll talk about the second question that could possibly be answered by the results of the draft lottery. But first, I'll tell you guys about another one of our sponsors, Athletic Greens. So this product, I literally use every single day. I started taking AG1 because I wanted to have a better gut health. I want to have more energy. I wanted to feel healthier. I didn't want to take a bunch of different pills, a bunch of different vitamins, a supplement that actually tastes great, all those kind of things. And I've been on it for a few weeks now, and I absolutely love it. It doesn't taste like it's super. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It has kind of a mild tropical taste. I actually look forward to eat, eating each morning. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All of those things. And it's lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chem chemicals, or artificial anything, while still tasting good. It supports better sleep quality and recovery, supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best things. Athletic Green uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. And it costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your daily cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. And Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews, recommended by professional athletes and trusted by leading health experts such as Tim Ferriss. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every single day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NBA network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NBA network to take ownership over your health and pick up your ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. It's the best way to support the podcast. We're on our road to 3,000 subscribers. Continuing to show Lockdown that we're the best and fastest growing fan base at the Lockdown Network. So, again, if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel, Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. So, what's the next question that could possibly be answered just by the draft lottery before we even get to the draft? The draft will confirm some things, but I think a lot of questions could be answered just by the results of the draft lottery. I think one of those questions could possibly be, how they plan on building around Kay Cunningham next season. Now, this question right here is something that's been posed all season long. Ever since people saw and, and Kate started to play like a superstar, started to play like a star, and everyone saw, yeah, Kay's number one pick. He was he, he's playing like it. He's the guy they're gonna build around. Everyone's questions immediately went to what's gonna happen next year? What's gonna happen years from now? How are they gonna build around him? How is it how, what, what players do they want around Kay Cunningham? I think the draft lottery maybe. While it won't tell you the exact players that are going to build around him, the exact players they'll sign, the exact players they'll trade for, the exact players they draft, I think it will give you somewhat of an idea of what will be happening. Because I think it hinges on who's available in this draft. I think this draft will be the last time we see the Detroit Pistons. And I know that some of you guys aren't going to like to hear this. Some of you guys have said that you know, I've seen a lot of you guys tell me in the comments or on Twitter that you'd like to see the Pistons lose just one more year and get a top pick next year. I don't see that happening. I think this is the Pistons' last chance at getting a top pick in the NBA draft. I don't think they'll be one of the worst teams in the entire NBA next year. I don't think they'll be great. I don't think they'll be that good, but I don't think they'll be top three bad. I think they'll probably be somewhere in like the 7 to 12 range. I think that's where they'll be at next year. 
So I don't expect them to be at the top of the draft next year, which means this is the Pistons' last chance, I think, to get an absolute blue-chip prospect as long as they don't fall down. And if they land in the top three, much like it will help decide where they'll go in free agency, it gives you kind of an idea of how they're going to want to build around Kay Cunningham. Because figure, I, I'm assuming, if you guys disagree, again, let me know in the comment section down below or hit me up over on Twitter. But I think that if they land in the top three, they are going to draft one of the big men, Chet Holmgren, Jabari Smith, and Paolo Bancaro. And that guy is going to be the number two for this team moving forward. I know some people think it's Sadiq Bey. While Sadiq Bey proved me wrong last season, incredibly wrong, played extremely well and proved that he is a building block, a legit building block for the Detroit Pistons future going years from now, years from now, even unless, of course, he gets thrown into like a trade for a superstar, which I won't rule out if they could get a superstar. But he is definitely a legit courting stone or building block, I should say, for the Pistons' future. I don't think he's a number two. I think he's likely a number three or number four for the Pistons when they eventually are trying to contend. Like, I think what people need to understand is with Kay Cunningham, we're not looking at just like eight seeds, seven seeds, six seeds. Like, eventually in the future, the Pistons want to win a championship. We're not looking at just making a good enough team to, you know, be a sixth seed, fifth seed. They want to win a championship. And I think on a championship team, Sadiq Bey is not going to be your number two. He's probably going to be your number three, maybe even a number four, which is completely fine. He's really good. But I just don't think on a championship team he'll be number two. Either way, my point is, is that if you land in the top three, this guy is likely going to be your number two because of multiple reasons. One, the Pistons are not a great free agent destination. I don't think they're going to swing some superstar in free agency one of these years. I think don't think they're going to swing one of these stars in free agency. I mean, the guys that are on their board right now that we're talking about the Pistons being really interested in, being big buyers for, are guys like Jalen Brunson, never been an all-star. Tom Sexton, never been an all-star. Miles Bridges, never been an all-star. DeAndre Aiden. Like, these guys are, they're good players, but they're not superstars. They're not changing the outcome of your, they're not, like, completely shifting your future. Like, they're not changing your franchise type of things. Those are the type of guys the Pistons are going to get. And the way they're going to get superstars is the exact same way they got Kay Cunningham, and that's in the draft. They have to be able to get good draft picks. They have to make the right pick and be able to develop them. So, likely, the number two guy to Kay Cunningham, his sidekick, is going to come from this upcoming draft, in my estimation. If they get one of the big guys, for example, let's say they get Chet Holmgren. I think that gives you an idea of how they're going to build around Chet and Kay. They're going to surround them with shooters. They're probably going to run a lot of pick and rolls with Chet. They're going to let Chet work from the elbows a little bit. Kay probably isn't going to have the ball in his hands, at least he shouldn't. Every single damn possession, they'll probably work through him and Chet Holmgren, and they want to surround them with shooters. If they get Jabari Smith, who is a nice lights out shooter, at least from what I've understood. I haven't went to a deep dive with him, but from my general understanding is that he's a lights out shooter, shooter from what I've read. They'll probably go after another big guy who can roll to the basket. They'll probably get, you know, uh, a scoring wing and let Jabari Smith be one of those guys who spaces the floor and attacks off kickouts, able to knock down shots at an extremely high clip, take advantage of mismatches, etc. If they get one of the wing guys, they're not going to go you, – like, for example, if they get Ivy, Sharp, uh, any of these other wing guys, I think that lets you know, okay, they're going to have to build around this backcourt. That's what their core is going to be, and they're going to need to surround these two guys with a nice big guy who's able to roll to the rim and just shooters around them. I think what this really answers as well is that, you know, there's been arguments about what player is the guy that they're going to build around or want Cade next to Cade in the backcourt. I don't think that's the question that people should be asking. It's about – what player should the, do the Pistons want in the system? What kind of system are they wanting to build around K? I think that's the question that needs to be answered. I think you could possibly get a better idea of this because it's going to depend on who they get in the draft. They're not going to go Dallas Maverick, five out, ISO, Cade, and, and just look for mismatches every possession if they get one of these big guys like Ben Carroll. Ben Carroll is a guy who can handle the ball and create opportunities for himself and can create opportunities for other guys. They can't just go five out and just let Cade ISO the ball every single possession. I don't think that's a good idea anyways. But especially if you get Ben Carroll, you're not even using his skill set, and he's supposed to be your number two moving forward. So they get him, that changes how they're going to build this system. If they get Jabari Smith, you probably have a better chance of being able to run that five-out system because of how well the shooter he is. But again, that, those are the kind of questions I think could be answered just by the lottery. It won't be finalized until obviously the Pistons make their actual selection in the upcoming draft. But again, I think after the draft lottery, if the Pistons get top three, you have an idea of who they're going to go after. If they fall outside the top three, you know who's going to be gone and you know who's going to be available. And that's probably going to be a bunch of wings and guards. You have an idea of who they're going after in free agency and what they're likely going to be thinking about 
moving forward because this guy in this upcoming draft is going to have to be, in my opinion, their number two moving forward, and they need to make sure that this roster and their system fits around these guys. Cade, this number two, I don't think they're worried much about Sadiq Bey, how he's going to fit. I think Sadiq will have no issues with that um, unless he just, you know, never, you know, I, I don't think Sadiq's going to have an issue. I'm not even going to go into that. I don't think Sadiq will have an issue no matter who they draft or what system they build around. He's a good shooter. Eventually he'll become, a, I think, a decent defender. And those guys, especially a guy like him who's proven to be able to attack closeouts now and draw free throws, he'll be able to fit in basically any system, I think. So I think he'll be fine. It's really just about these two guys, Cade and whoever they draft. And the results of the draft line, I think, will give you a better idea of what system they'll eventually go with. When we come back, we'll answer the third question that will possibly be answered by the results of the draft lottery. But that's after this coming upcoming ad break. Let me tell you guys a little bit about you guys' favorite sponsor, Built Bar. The best part about Built Bars, they're healthy and they're delicious. No more sacrificing delicious food for health. With Built Bar, you can have both. And it's real easy. All you have to do is go to Built.com and order now. All Built Bars and Puff Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means that with Built Bar, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy eating them. Have you ever tried the Puff's, uh, Puffs Built Bar yet? We are going crazy for the puffs. They come in crazy flavors like banana cream pie and even churro. And who doesn't want a protein bar that tastes like a churro? And they're only 140 calories. Sign me up. If that's not enough flavor for you, you might want to try the mix box. The mix box comes with 12 flavors of bars and puffs. Fruit bars make sure that there is something for everyone. My favorite flavor is the peanut butter flavor. You guys know that. But they have all kinds of different flavors. Cherry barcia, strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, uh, coconut, coconut almond. All kinds of flavors. Make sure you're checking out BuiltBar.com or Built.com and constantly seeing all the flavors. And if you're constantly checking out Built.com, you'll see that they're constantly coming out with limited time flavors all the time. It feels like every other week they're coming out with a brand new flavor. So, again, make sure you're heading to Built.com to see all these crazy flavors that the Built Bar has that also is incredible for your health. Again, go to Built.com, but this time use promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 50% off your next order. Again, Built.com, use promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. That's Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to support the podcast. I'd really appreciate it. We're on a road to 3,000 subscribers. Continuing to show Lockdown the way the best and fastest growing fan base at the Lockdown Network. So again, YouTube channel, Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Now, there's a multiple different avenues I want to take with this possible third question that will be answered. Um, but I decided to go with the decision that they'll eventually make on Jeremy Grant. Now, I think Jeremy Grant, this is just my opinion. I was wrong at the deadline, so who knows. But I'll, I believe that Jeremy Grant will be traded this offseason no matter what. I think he's going to be off this team. I think they're going to probably trade him for one of the draft picks in this upcoming draft. I, I We've talked about many times that Portland, the Portland Trailblazers are, I think, the leading guys to get Jeremy Grant for the, because of his relationship with Damian Lillard. They've made some cap space. They're trying to build a new system around Dame of kind of like more two-way guys instead of just straight-up offense. They, you know, they signaled that when they got rid of C.J. McCollum into that era, and they've been reported to be going after Jeremy Grant for a while. And I told you guys, even at the trade deadline, I could confirm that they were pushing very, very hard for Jeremy Grant, according to my sources. So I think that's likely that Jeremy Grant will end up in Portland. Now, there's some other teams that have popped up recently that could possibly be interested in them. We saw something, I believe, last week about the Cleveland Cavaliers possibly be being interested in Jeremy Grant. However, I think we all, I think everyone has the Portland Trailblazers number one on that list. Even though I believe, though, that Jeremy Grant will be trained no matter what. There's a lot of people who don't agree with that. And I can respect that because Jeremy did try at the end of last season to take a step back, let the young guys lead, let Kay Cunningham more so lead, and him take that third role, second role, and just feed off of guys, attack closeouts, hit catch and shoot shots, and take easier shots. And Troy Weaver said after the season that he had to sit down with Jeremy, him and Dwayne Casey sat down with Jeremy and said, hey, you need to take better shots. Basically, I'm not, he didn't come out and say this. I'm basically summarizing. He said, hey, you need to take better shots. You need to have a better shot diet, play a more efficient game. And I, I think you saw that start to happen. I want to give Jeremy credit for that. After the All-Star game, after the All-Star break, I should say, he definitely started to try to do that. And the Pistons, they had somewhat of their own type of big three. Now, it's not actually a big three. These guys would get pummeled by other quote-unquote big threes. But the Pistons' own big three of Jeremy Grant, Kay Cunningham, Sadiq Bay were playing extremely well. 
after the All-Star break. And that was a lot to do with Jeremy taking the backseat and letting these guys lead and him feed off of them. So I understand why some people feel like, well, it's not a foregone conclusion that he's traded. Is he likely? I think a lot of people would say he's likely to be traded. But there's a lot of people who still believe that he could possibly have a future with the Pistons. He could possibly sign a contract extension. And if he buys into this role, that would be a good thing. I'm not one of those people, but there is a lot of people out there that think that, and I can respect that. So I think the draft lottery will have a big impact on what the decision will be with Jeremy Grant. I'm going to sound like a broken record here. But again, if the Pistons land in the top three and they get, let's say, Paolo Bencaro, or they get Jabari Smith, I think that all but secures that Jeremy's gone. Because you got Sadiq Bey. Those two guys are power forwards, wings, at, at the very least. At, at, they maybe could play small forward, but at the very, they're definitely big guys, power forwards, maybe small ball center in certain situations. But definitely, I think you would say they're fours. So that would leave Jeremy as the odd man out, and they're not going to keep Jeremy over this blue chip prospect they're getting in this upcoming draft. So I think if they get a top three pick, it's likely that Jeremy like is, is going to be gone. And they already have like a crowded front court room. I think everyone expects Marvin Bagley to be back. They got Isaiah Stewart, even though you know Isaiah Stewart isn't better than Jeremy Grant, but I think they want to keep him. Isaiah Stewart, which we've heard that they, he could possibly be playing or trying to play four in the future. If they get a top three pick, they'll have another big guy. And it sounds like they're going to go after another big guy in free agency. And if you had Jeremy to that, you're talking about like five, possibly even six guys in the front court that you have to try five minutes for. That's just not realistic. So I feel like if they get a top three pick, or they get Ben Carroll, or they get Jabari Smith, or possibly even Holmgren. I think that possibly with, if they get Holmgren, they might want to play Holmgren next to Isaiah Stewart because he might not just be able to battle with big guys down there. It just I don't know if they if he'll be able to do that. They might want to play Stu with him, let Stu play five on defense, let him take like the physicality down low, and then offense, you know, mix it up if you want. But defensively, I think Stu would probably help Holmgren or another guy they signed free agency. We've talked about a few guys, obviously DeAndre Aiden, but there's other pickups in free agency at a big man position they could do. Either way, my point is I think if they get a top three pick, Jeremy's absolutely gone. There's no way he stays. However, if they fall out the top three, I do think that could increase the likelihood that we could see Jeremy Grant still in the Pistons. I think that he still would be traded, but I'm not going to lie. That would definitely increase the likelihood that he'll be here because they'll be getting a shooting guard or a possible wing in the draft. And that doesn't absolutely take Jeremy's minutes, especially if they get a guard. If they get a shooting guard, they take Ivy or they take Sharp or they take Dyson Daniels or they take Matherin, like one of these guys. That doesn't impact Jeremy. That that's that guy's not going to be taking minutes from Jeremy. So I think that gives reason to believe, hey, Jeremy could possibly be on this team. And is that really a bad thing moving forward if he accepts this role and accepts to be a backseat, you know, a third, fourth option and just play what and do what the team needs him to do? If that happens, I think that increases the likelihood that he stays. And we could possibly be seeing Jeremy Grant signing a contract extension. We could possibly see him start next season off with the Pistons to see how it goes in that lineup and then eventually sign a contract extension. Who knows? But those are some things that I think the draft lottery could potentially be answering for us as Pistons fans when it happens. Now, again, nothing will be completely finalized. I think that obviously the draft itself will answer all of these questions 100%. But again, we'll get, you know, an idea or understanding, I feel like, once the lottery happens, where the Pistons will likely be going, what the teams ahead of them will likely be doing. And really, it's just about if the Pistons get a top three pick. Do you want me to be honest? If they get a top three pick, you're getting one of the top prospects Ben Carroll, Smith, Holmgren, if they fall at top three, now you're looking at trying to find a, you know, I don't want to say a diamond in the rough, but it's definitely not. I don't, it doesn't sound like, at least from what I've read and what I've listened to from draft guys, that they're not as for sure things as one of those top three guys. So those are my questions I feel like could be answered. There are a few other questions I thought about having answered, but I'll leave those ones to you guys. I want you guys to send me questions in the comment section down below or on Twitter at Kuka Hill. Questions you guys think could be answered by the draft lottery results. Let me know again, comments down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. But that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys for listening to today's podcast, making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. Make sure you guys are making Lockdown NBA your second listen of every single day. From the first jump ball of the playing tournament to the last possession of the finals, Lockdown experts take you deep inside the playoffs with inside analysis affecting all 30 teams. Again, make sure you're making Lockdown NBA your second listen of every single day. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe out there. Have fun watching these players. It's, uh, playoffs is getting juicy. It's getting interesting. I believe every prediction I made over the last two days was wrong. I'm sorry if I jinxed you. I'm sorry if you guys placed any uh, you know bet slips and I screwed you guys over. You guys can send them to me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. But 
it's been fun. So make sure you guys are enjoying the playoffs. And until the next podcast, I'll see you guys there. Peace out, everybody.